So, you've binge-watched The Great British Sewing Bee, you've bought the book and joined every sewing group on Facebook, and your head is bursting with ideas for projects. But where to start? Which sewing machine? They all look so complicated with buttons and dials and attachments and tension and bobbins. It's so overwhelming. Stick around and in this series of videos I'll guide you through all you need to know to get you on the road to becoming a contestant on The Sewing Bee. So now you're ready to take the plunge and get your first sewing machine. Stop right there. Sewing machines are a big investment. What if you buy the wrong one? What if, when you've tried it, you discover sewing's just not for you? You can spend hours online searching through the thousands of models available and end up still no wiser but with a cracking headache. So what do you do? First of all, ask friends and relatives if they've got a machine languishing under their stairs that you can try and learn to sew on. You'll be surprised how many of them have. It doesn't have to be all singing and all dancing. A basic, older machine is perfect to learn to sew on. In fact, it's probably better than a new one. If all else fails, look for a good second-hand one, but make sure you see it working before you buy it. It's important to have the manual for the machine and more importantly to read it. Every machine is different, and it's important that you get to know your particular machine. If your sewing machine didn't come with a manual, you may be able to download one from the internet. So once you've learned to sew and know which type of machine you want, you can give back that old machine to your friend or relative, or if you've bought an old one, sell it on to help fund the purchase of the machine of your dreams. So you've got your machine, what now? read the manual. Firstly, we'll look at the parts of the machine and try to demystify some of the bits. Doesn't matter whether your machine was built in 1910 or 2019, they all work in a very similar way. The vast majority of machines will be of the lock stitch variety. This is where the top thread, which goes through the needle, is passed through the fabric and wrapped around a bobbin of thread underneath. This creates a stitch. There are some machines that use a single thread and create a chain stitch, but these are quite rare and may be seen on mini sewing machines or children's toys. Most sewing machines are electrically operated. Earlier machines were either cranked by hand or by means of a treadle connected by a leather belt to the machine's pulley. Some older machines have an external motor and these are connected to the machine pulley by a rubber belt. These could be added onto a hand cranked or treadle machine to update it. Almost all newer machines have the motor incorporated inside the casing and can be belt driven or direct drive. The machine pulley uses a series of gears and cams to operate the rest of the machine, from moving the needle up and down to spinning the shuttle race, but more of that later. So first off, place the machine on a sturdy table in front of you with the needle end to the left hand side. Assuming your sewing machine is electric, the first thing to do is to attach the power cord and foot pedal. These may be joined together, or, as on most newer machines, separate. When you press down on the foot pedal, the machine is activated. The more you press, the faster the machine goes, just like the accelerator pedal on a car. So locate the power switch and turn the machine on. Next, locate the spool pin. This is where your spool of thread will go. It may already be attached to the machine, or it may be stored in the accessories bin. Place it onto the machine and add a circle of felt. This helps the spool turn smoothly. Next, we need to wind the bobbin. The bobbin supplies the second thread from underneath the machine. Bobbins come in various types and we'll cover that in a later video. Just make sure that you're using the correct bobbin for your machine. Pop the spool of thread you want to use on the spool pin. There's usually a thread guide close to the head of the machine and we'll need to pass the thread around this and then down to the bobbin winder, which is usually located towards the machine pulley. Take the thread and pass it through the hole in the bobbin, from the inside to the outside, and place the bobbin on the winder pin. If your bobbin has several holes, you can use any of them. The bobbin winder is usually engaged by pressing it towards the balance wheel. Some machines disengage the machine pulley clutch automatically when the winder is engaged. Others need to be disengaged manually by turning an inner wheel. 
Disengaging the clutch stops the needle from moving and the feed dogs underneath. Grab a pair of small scissors and while holding the loose thread that's sticking out of the top of the bobbin, activate the foot pedal slowly. When the bobbin has wound a couple of turns, snip off the loose thread. Lift your foot off the pedal when the bobbin is filled enough for your needs or continue until the bobbin winder is automatically disengaged. This happens when the bobbin is full. Snip the thread and remove the bobbin from the winder and re-engage the clutch if necessary. Place the bobbin in the bobbin case. There are a few different designs of bobbin cases. Some like this are mounted from the front. Some are accessed through a panel on the bed at the side of the needle. Some have a drop-in bobbin where the bobbin case is not removed from the machine. The bobbin should be inserted into the case so the thread comes off in an anti-clockwise direction. Then thread through the case making sure that the thread goes under the tension spring and then clip back into the machine like this. Most modern machines have a series of arrows to show you the path the thread should take. On older machines you may have to consult your manual for the threading guide. However, with most machines it should be easy to work out how to thread it. Put the thread you want to use on the spool pin. There may be more than one and it doesn't usually matter which one you use. If you're using a horizontal spool pin, use the appropriate spool cap for the size of spool you're using. The diameter of the spool cap should be larger than your spool. Next, lift the presser foot. Lifting the presser foot disengages the tensioning mechanism. Pass the thread around or through the thread guide, then down between the tension discs. These discs are adjustable to put pressure on the thread. On some machines the tension discs are visible, while on modern machines they are often hidden away. As I've just said, the tension discs only operate correctly when the presser foot's down. When it's up, the tension discs are moved apart to allow the thread to be pulled through easily. Next, the thread goes over or through the hole in the take-up lever. Again, this depends on your particular machine. The take-up lever pulls back the loose thread and creates a tight and even stitch. There's often one or two thread guides down towards the needle, usually one just above the needle on the presser bar itself, and finally thread the needle. Depending on your machine and how the needle is fitted, the needle may be threaded from left to right or from front to back, occasionally from right to left. Some machines have a gadget called an automatic threader. On others, you will have to thread the needle manually. This can be a little fiddly, but an inexpensive needle threader can help. Make sure the needle is in the top position when threading. Bring up the lower thread by holding onto the upper thread. Manually turn the balance wheel towards you. This will take the thread down and around the bobbin, catching the bobbin thread and pulling it back up. Use a small pair of scissors to catch the bobbin thread and bring it to the top. Ensure that both ends of the thread are positioned under the presser foot and laid towards the back of the machine. Note the ridge plates below the presser foot. These are known as feed dogs and they move the fabric under the needle when sewing. Setting the stitch length changes how far the feed dogs, and so the fabric, moves between each stitch. Place your fabric under the presser foot and drop the foot down onto the fabric using the presser foot lever. This now engages the tensioning mechanism and you're now ready to sew. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.